what's been on my mind Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light Hey darling We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now Hey guys, welcome back. You have found either searching or stumbling upon the Farmhouse Knitting Podcast and I'm your host Dana. I'm a knitter and a little bit of crocheter who lives in my farmhouse in Northern Illinois and I just share about my knitting adventures on this podcast and the things that I have on my needles and the things that I just cast off. So welcome and um yeah, if you're new, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, then welcome back. How are you guys? We are um, having a, a bit of a rough week here in um, Illinois. We've had some really crazy, strange weather, severe weather. We had within about an hour and a half, um, I think three tornadoes touched down in our county two days, no, last night. Two days ago or last night and then the other night was thunderstorms this morning was thunderstorms and then it's also crazy hot it was I believe they said heat index was 103 degrees and it is today too and so we are inside so I do have the doors to our sunroom open and hopefully you can't hear too much of the air conditioner unit going but I there's no way I would survive in here without the air conditioner on so I'm excited for fall because I can actually do the podcasts in front of my yarn hutch when we don't have the air conditioner on and it will be a little bit cozier. But this is a nice little cozy nook. This is my sunroom. And so let's just chat. <laughs> so real fast before I show you my knitting, I did have some people asking how I am. I am 30 weeks pregnant and I have a health update. Um, we are all good. Baby's good. I had a few like weeks of really dizziness and fainting spells. I failed my one hour glucose test and then I passed the three hour but I pa almost passed out uh, at the doctor's office and um, that's the one where they have to draw your blood every hour for three hours and it was just a whole crazy thing. But I've changed my diet um, so that at breakfast time I'm not having too much sugar. That means I cut out coffee and I am, I feel like I'm like going back to health class and trying to learn the difference between simple and complex carbs because apparently that was making my, my, I guess, blood pressure, no, blood sugar be too high and then I'd faint and I have low blood pressure and it was a whole thing, but we are good. We've, I've figured out the diet changes and um, we're all good. So like I said, I'm 30 weeks pregnant and due in October. I don't know if I can, I realize I haven't done a bump update maybe at all and I don't know if all this can fit in the frame but I thought I'm gonna show you real fast if I can attempt to fit it all in <laughs> so barely wanting to fit in there <laughs> barely wanting to fit in there is my 30 week bump which I feel I can't grow any bigger but I've got another uh, two months to go Hopefully that's all. I do tend to go early, so that's hopefully that's all. Okay, on to the knitting. I hope hope you guys are all doing much better than I have been the last two weeks. But like I said, we're on the rise and we're we're swinging up. So I have some really exciting things to show you today. Um, I have two pairs of finished socks. One is a new design by me, and one is a gift that I knitted for my sister. So Erica, if you're watching this, turn away now. Don't listen, <laughs> don't watch. Um, and then the other is actually, well I guess technically I have five finished projects, but one, three of them are basically the same thing that I made for my girls. So the first thing that I wanted to share with you is a new design that you can find on my Ravelry page, my website, which are both Basilla Farmhouse and um, BasillaFarmhouse.com and then on Etsy where I'm TYF Knits and these are blocked they're not on the blocker right now because I didn't block my sister socks but these are blocked finished these are the sweet cider socks so these are some worsted weight cabin socks that I'm extremely excited about and these are a new pattern 
I just want to wear them now, but obviously it's way too hot. And even stubborn me who turned my last cabin socks into shorty socks, I, I just can't force myself to wear these all day or even for a little bit of the day because it's it's just not that weather, but we're so close. We're, what, three weeks away, so, away from September, which is my birthday month, and fall is my favorite season, and so I'm very excited. But I knit these with my number seven, US seven circular, Haya Haya Needles, and this yarn is the Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted, and the color is Amber Heather. And I just think of pumpkin season, apple picking, and sweet cider. Woo! There go all my whips. And sweet cider. Oh my goodness. Try not to cause an avalanche here. I'm sorry you guys. I'm going on the fly here. I need something to hold that up. It's not working. So I propped my notes up, thinking this would keep me from rambling. But I need to rethink my strategy because that was almost an entire avalanche of projects everywhere. Okay, take two. <laughs> nope. <sighs> Dropped one of the one of the projects I wanted to show you. Okay, take two on the sweet cider socks. <laughs> so like I said, this is the worsted weight knit picks wool of the Andes. And oh my gosh, they're so squishy soft. I blocked them. I feel like the cables are really just popping out and I'm really excited to wear these. So like I said, my birthday is in September. It's actually the last day of September. And last year we went to a pumpkin farm that in like apple picking farm that's local to us. And I think we're gonna do that again this year. Um, last year it was really cold and we went on my actual birthday. So I think this year we'll pick something close to the day but not the exact day we'll just go based on weather because that was tough with three kids under whatever they were under five at the time because it was really cold but I'm really excited to wear these I these don't fit under yeah I'll hold them up one by one these don't fit on like with shoes like tennis shoes gym shoes um I do wear them with my boots all the time, and I do wear them like snow boots, fall boots, hunter rain boots, um, and then I'm a Birkenstocks girl. I wear the clogs, the actual like closed toe clogs, and I wear these with them all the time. And then when I'm at home, I actually, well, I wear them without, um, I was about to say without pants, I'll wear them with shorts. But as it gets cold, my favorite, like my fall uniform is, my favorite thing is to wear black leggings because they're, they're tight in the leg so that this comes over it. And it ends up being where, if I wear black leggings, about this much overlaps the leggings and then goes straight into the leggings and it just looks really cute. It almost looks like you're wearing indoor boots, but they're, I think cuter. Anything that is cuter than a hard sole boot. So I am so excited about those. Um, and yes, I couldn't get this design out of my head. I actually made it uh, back in, back before I got pregnant, I think, or before I started getting morning sickness here on the podcast. I was knitting it and doing like a voiceover podcast for it. Um, and I knit them in gray. I will try to find a video or a picture and insert that. If not, I'll like link it either where it drops down. I'm not sure I remember what side, but if I link a video, it, it drops down here or here. Or anytime I say look in the show notes or in the description box, there's a little arrow that again, I'm all backwards, so I don't know which side it's on. Right under the video, you can click that little arrow and it will drop down and it will give you all the links to anything I'm talking about, like the yarn or the patterns or, like I said, this video. If you want to see me knitting these in gray, if maybe orangish, burnt orange, um, 
with a little bit of brown tones mixed in. Maybe that's not your colors. Um, I also have them being shown knit up in gray there and I never made the pattern because I got pregnant and then I was like, you know what, now's the time. I gotta get it out before baby's out. And so I'm so excited that these are sock pattern number two that I have officially designed and published. So I'm thrilled about those. I'm very excited for all the autumn vibes that they're giving me. And, oh, I'm just so excited. And for all of you that supported the last uh, pattern that I, um, what's the word, designed and published, I guess. Thank you guys so much, the Country Cabin Socks. You guys are amazing. I was so nervous. Uh, I did a whole bit in one of my videos about how I was nervous about designing my first sock pattern and had imposter syndrome and all of that and so but you guys were amazing with the support for those socks so thank you very much and that with that leads me to my next finished project which is let me think if I can remember who designed it Alicia Plummer these are her linden socks. Now, like I said, these aren't blocked at all yet. Um, I will wet block them and then stick them back on here. I just had finished them and I wanted to show you guys them. These are for my sister, which I'm very excited about. I did try them on me. They are a little slouchy, but having the fitted heel helps. Um, now the pattern for the linden socks doesn't get different sizes. So that's a minus, but it does have where obviously, I mean any sock, you can add a heel and you can change the heel out and all that, but my last experience with a sock pattern that I had gotten was not great because it didn't have, um, it wasn't sized and it didn't have a very great heel and actually I don't think it had any heel, I think I inserted my own color changed heel, um, but the whole thing was very slouchy and they're still cute but don't fit great but these like I said are a little slouchy I am hoping that once I block them it kind of tightens things up a little but also plumps out these stitches so the linden sock pattern really all you're doing is an alternating dot stitch and this is from the book um, plum dandy knits which I will try to remember to link down below in the description and like I said, it's by the designer, Alicia Plummer. Um, the yarn I used is Knit Picks, again, um, Simply Wool, which is my first time working with it, and I loved it. I'm, I added it to my birthday list because I'm kind of sad that I'm giving these ones away, but I know my sister's going to love them. The color is called Wordsworth, and it's completely her color. I kind of feel like the lighting's making it show up a little more brown but it's actually very much like an ash gray brown. I don't know if that, that's my best description for the color, but it's a very me yarn. And so I already added it to my birthday gift idea list because I love this yarn. First of all, I love that it's bulky. Um, this was my first time making this bulky of a sock, I think. I used a size nine needle. Um, I don't have a circular needle for nines because I don't use nines very often. So I used uh, double pointed needles the whole way, which was a little bit tricky because I'm not a double pointed needle knitter. Um, if I can help it, I'm, my favorites are circular needles and probably double pointed needles next and straight needles. I just, I've lost the coordination to balance it all, I think. I think, especially if they're long or er, uh, straight needles. Are you guys the same way? <laughs> I feel like I almost need to use my stomach to help hold, not the needles, but, okay, so pretend I'm, oh, I don't, I don't know. Pretend I'm sitting and knitting. I almost need to use my bump to hold, and this is like pregnant or post baby pouch, mom pouch. I almost have to use my pouch to hold the sock, like the weight of the sock or whatever I'm knitting. And so not the actual needles. And when I use double pointed needles or straight needles, I feel like 
I can't do that because I'm constantly poking myself, which is either also poking a baby or just, like I said, poking my mom pouch, my perpetual mom pouch. And I just, it felt awkward using the double pointy needles, but it was the only size they had and I, I made it through. Luckily, they are a really, really fast knit and um, they knit up very quickly. I knit the first pair and then I was so excited about them and then I was like, you know what, I think this would be perfect for my sister. And so um, I right away cast on the next pair. And um, I hope she loves them, I hope so. Um, Erica, you can start watching again now. There are no more spoilers to be seen for you. Um, okay, my next finished project to show you is three, it's kind of three in one. So a few episodes ago I showed my, um, oh did I go to Joanne's? Joanne's yarn haul, I think it was. Um, we braved Joanne's with my sister and her two kids and me and my three kids and my mom. It was chaos but it was really fun. And they had a lot of stuff on sale but also my daughters picked out this yarn. I don't have the label but it's by DMC and the actual yarn I think is called Lil Toppers which I'll link down below and it's one of those hat one of those yarns that comes with a little friend to put on top which I've never done so these are the little friends <laughs> and then these are the hats so my girls picked out these hats for themselves this is little Lucy's my one and a half year old almost one and a half year olds and she wanted a little I'm not sure, is that a whale? It's like a narwhal. Um, she wanted that, mostly she just liked carrying it around and her sisters liked picking it out for her. And then my five and a half year old, there's already like leaves in it because they wore it outside even though it was so hot. My five and a half year old and my three and a half, almost four year old, picked out these ones to match, which I thought was really cute because they are also my girls that clash the most and I thought it was very very cute that they wanted the same hat because usually they're they want opposite things one loves blue so one has to love pink which means one loves Elsa and the other one loves Anna and so I thought it was kind of like hey a little hint that something's going right and they really do love each other and they want to match each other so this project was really fast to knit um I also use double double pointed needles because I'm trying to remember what size. It might have also been size 9. Um, but I just did the ribbing and the regular stockinette and then the little friend on top. And then it comes with this little ribbon. Oh, I'm giving you it upside down. You just tied a little bow on the back. I gave them each a little wooden um, button so that if they ever do decide they don't, they're like too cool for this or they want to switch out who has what. Um, that will all be good. That will still fit them. I did knit, okay, so I'm trying to remember the sizes. They had infant, which wasn't very, it was very generic, um, child and adult, I think were the two sizes, or the three sizes. So I knit two child sized for these two, thinking, well, the kindergarten and preschool fit into these. These fit perfectly. I'm so excited. They're not too big. They're not too tight. So I think they'll last for a few seasons. And like I said, we can take these off if they want to. And then Lucy, I had no idea because they said infant and it wasn't specific at all. It didn't have very good measurements listed. It might not have had any measurements listed actually. So I thought, I don't know if she's infant because when does infant end? for them, I don't know, she's one and a half. Um, and so I thought, you know what, I'm gonna make child sized. And really I should have just tried this one on, one of these ones on her um, and seen, because this one is very big on her. <laughs> I'll insert actually the video of when I gave it to them. Lucy. I want to get you guys a picture. And where is this? Is it the white way? Yes, it is. Okay, Lucy, over here. 
until they were all done and gave it to them all at the same time. They were thrilled. They knew I was working on them and they had seen kind of some progress shots and uh, they hadn't tried them on or been given them yet because I didn't want to give one of them theirs first and then everyone else wait or like one person was last and felt sad. So I gifted them all at once and Lucy's is gigantic and <laughs> she loves it. It's kind of nice because it is so big that she can pull it on and off herself. And the reason I decided to go with child for a one and a half year old is because I wanted her to be able to wear it uh, this season, next season, this obviously seasons and seasons to come. And because I kind of felt like if I knit her the baby size, well, her sisters are gonna still fit in theirs for a few more, well, probably a bunch more years and she might feel sad if she's left out. So. I'm really excited that she loves it so much because as soon as I put it on and her whole half her face disappeared, I was like, oh no, this is not going to fit. But then once I rolled it up, she was, since she could see, she was good to go and oh my gosh, it's the cutest darn thing. Uh, like I said, this, and like I said, when I got the yarn, this is like the first kind of, this, this is the first time I've knit this kind of hat. Um, it's not my usual style. I'm very much like neutrals and rustic knitter and, um, but they pick these out and I always want them to feel like they're part of my knitting and I have time to knit them stuff too. So I finished them, we're good. Um, I also did get, just like this, um, they have one that's like a lovey. So like a little baby size blanket that they can hold and snuggle. And so I got that in, I think it's like blues, maybe some greens, uh, with a little dinosaur on top that I am going to make for baby brother. They picked that one out for their baby brother, who's um, hopefully going to love it. And he, it is a smaller yarn, so it's not the exact same yarn, and so I have to use a smaller needle. So i got to get started on that so I can finish it before he gets here. So... I'm going to take a sip of water. I'm so sad that I am not drinking coffee. It's tragic. But I have actually gotten into... I know it's it's not fall yet, I know. But I've gotten into... Um, why can't I think of the word? Apple cider. I got a whole bunch of it from Trader Joe's. And yes, I have been sticking in the microwave and drinking it hot. And then I also am drinking it cold depending on time of day. Seems like I want to do it hot at night and then cold during when I usually would have coffee, which is now. It's after lunchtime when the girls are settling down for their nap time and their quiet time. So I have found a different substitute that doesn't have caffeine. Okay. Let's see, I have some whips to share with you. Let me flip my notes that didn't want to stay, but so far, so far they're okay. Okay, I have, let me think, I have two whips to show you guys. I wanted to show four. One of them I frogged just before making this video because um, it's a pair of vanilla cabin socks that I'm working on for my husband that when I did the math in my head, I was thinking of the Knit Picks Wool of the Andes yarn, which has a different gauge than what I ended up using. So it, it was way too big, and so I frogged it, and um, I only had maybe three inches done of it. So hopefully I will finish those for the next episode. So 
let's see. I cast off all my other socks, so I had to start another pair. And this is, I'm just following a vanilla sock pattern. Um, I'm mostly following the one by Crazy Sock Lady. I didn't do as big of a cuff, but that's, I'd say, what I'm probably going to end up following for the rest of the way. The only reason I didn't do as big of a cuff is because I don't have as much of the contrast coloring yarn, and I didn't want to run out. I'm not sure if I'll do contrasting heel and toe also, but okay enough talk. This is my vanilla sock that I'm working on. So the cuff is actually my leftover share pair from um, Mandy's Makings. And I don't know its actual individual name. Um, it's part of the share pair that she called A Beautiful Rain. And I'm not sure if this one has its own name or if like the set was a beautiful rain. I'm, I don't know. Um, but I'll link that. I don't know if she's still dyeing that color or not. I know she's working on some other, other things right now, getting ready for fall. But this is actually very similar to the shorty socks that I made with her share pair because this white that is starting to come in is very similar to what came with the set of the um, A Beautiful Rain. It doesn't have, I, I think the A Beautiful Rain had a little bit of pink and a little bit of blue speckled in there. This is more just pretty much rustic brown and tan. So this yarn is actually the Leading Men Fiber Arts. I think I'm saying that right. Um, and the yarn is Show, oh, I'm trying to think showstopper and the color was sand dollar and I found this at our local yarn shop the fold um, which is in South Elgin Illinois if you're local um, and I do have a yarn shop tour of them it was a lot of fun so anyway I'm so excited about these socks because I had been waiting to finish my design my two design my two sock designs and then waiting to finish a few other things before I broke into this. This beautiful, beautiful yarn. Oh my goodness. Okay, this yarn has a story, first of all. So yesterday, I knew I was gonna cast these on. And so, I set up our yarn swift on our kitchen table. I set up the ball winder. I got it all set up and I started going. For some reason, I completely forgot to stick the first part of the yarn through the little loop that'll hold it on the ball winder. So it was a whole thing. I was literally sweating winding this up into a ball. And um, my daughters were taking turns rolling the, the winder thing. My other daughter was on the side because she's, she's just tall enough to reach and grab stuff on the sides of the table. So I had to bit, like fend her off and like make sure the other two were taking turns, try to keep the yarn on the ball winder because it wanted to slip off all the time. And then after all that, which took way longer than it should have to get this all balled up, we had just put the girls down for their nap. And no, not for nap, for bedtime. We had just put them down for bedtime I wasn't even thinking. I had my project bag on the, the floor right next to the couch and suddenly, I'm sitting there and I'm talking to my husband on the couch, suddenly I was like, he's too quiet. That dog's a little too quiet. And so I glance over and look down and sure enough, the dog ate my yarn. Oh my gosh, I was so upset because of how long it took for me to wind this up and just the obstacles I had to go through keeping the kids away from playing with it. So this is what the yarn looked like after the dog ate it. And he completely, he didn't do it gracefully and like just pull from the outside. He had to go straight for the middle and pull out all the yarn barf. It was a tangled mess and I was so, oh my gosh, it took forever to untangle. My husband actually took over because I told him, even ice cream isn't going to help this right now. And so he actually helped 
wind, I shouldn't even say help, he basically, he did, he wound this whole thing back onto the yarn swift, untangled, and then transferred it back to the ball winder for me. And this was all at like between eight o'clock and 10 o'clock last night. And it was the nicest thing, oh my goodness, because I was so upset. I was like, I just wanna, I wanna make these socks. And I spent all that time doing that, the yarn and the dog ate my yarn. And I, I know it's, he's a puppy and so it's normal, but it didn't help the situation at all. So anyway, tangent, but that is my vanilla sock that I'm working on. And I'm gonna make this full length, like go to my mid calf. I'm not gonna make shorties because I've got a lot of yarn I wanna use up specifically for this. I think it goes really well with the Mandy's makings. Make a little yarn snowman here. And um, I'm very excited. I think, I think the pink goes well with it, or not the pink, the purpley, because it's also kind of rustic and faded and it makes it really cute. So I'm excited about those. Um, okay, so I have two more. Two more, did I say I have three whips? One, two, three, four. I wanted to have four. Oh, I wanted to have five. Okay, so hold on, hold on. I wanted to have five. I frogged the cabin socks that I was working on. And then the other one, I just don't have enough done where I feel like it's even worth showing you anything of it, but I will show you that hopefully next episode. Um, but I do have two more whips to show you. So, one you might recognize that I've been working on is the Millie Tank Top by Mila Mia. And this is a free pattern on Ravelry. So this is like a little baby vest. This is the back panel of it. And it has these really cute little polka dots that I'm thrilled about. And it's just got a really cute Fair Isle cap, um, pattern. And the front of this is going to have sheep. But it's just, it's adorable. I'm really excited that I finished this. I used a size two needle, which it says to do for the ribbing, and then it wants you to switch over to three or four, I can't remember, um, which I didn't have for a straight needle, and the circular needles was getting to be too hard when it was on the wiry bit because of all the color work. So I'm just doing two, size two, this the whole way, and I'm actually thinking it's gonna work out because I'm doing size three to six, um, I don't remember if it had a size zero to three months, um, but I'm figuring if I do it with a smaller needle and a size three to six that hopefully this will fit him around Christmas time and he can be wearing this. I'm imagining a baby right here and I'm just burping his back. I think that would fit him. I think so. I'm excited. Um, it's very cute. I'm actually pretty impressed with my floats because I don't do a lot of color work. I don't have a lot of practice with it. Um, but I feel like, I feel like those are pretty good. I had pretty good tension. So that's the back panel of that. And um, I used the colors, I used the yarn Cascade 220. And I just did gray. Now the colors didn't have a name. Um, they do have a lot, which I can try to remember to add. So just gray and brown are the the, um, the colors I used. Actually, I think if I go on their website, I'll actually check my other show notes from the video where I talked about these last time because I think I went onto the website and found what their actual name is for each color. So um, yes, I'm so excited about that. I blocked these, or I blocked this because it was curling in like crazy along between the underarm and the ribbing. So I blacked this one already so that I could show you without it just looking like this scroll that I'm holding up. And um, I blacked it with my Franken knitting technique. If you haven't checked out my Franken knitting video, I'll put it up above, but 
<laughs> basically what I did was I take my kids foam like puzzle mat and I flip it upside down I put my stuff on there I well at first I, I rinsed it got it all wet and then I laid it out there and used my pins and stuff that way there's I mean the holes that it leaves are so teeny tiny but that way if I use it so much that it starts to show over time it's on the underside these things get abused by these girls so I wasn't too worried about it and um, it works perfectly I don't actually have a like a yarn specific blocking mat and so this works it's kind of the perfect size it works for most sweaters if it's a gigantic thing then it's not gonna work for that but if it's a gigantic thing I probably wouldn't really block it <laughs> to be honest I'm kind of a lazy blocker usually usually I don't block my socks at all because I just I wear them and I feel like by wearing them it helps make everything bloom as they say and um, I don't know I don't usually block. Do you guys usually block? Is that a step that you skip or are you guys good blockers? Let me know in the comments because unless it's something I'm gifting to someone, I don't block it usually. Or if I'm taking pictures, then I don't block it usually. But even for pictures, I'm usually doing a picture of it on me. So not the best blocker every time. Um, and then also I have to think of like, where, where am I going to put this? I'm going to block it overnight. Is it going to dry overnight or do I have to fend off kids from getting it the next day? Anyway, I have one more whip to show you. <laughs> that is not going to be something I block because, actually because it's just going to get scrunched up anyway. And then also because it's I'm pretty sure just acrylic yarn. It's nothing super crazy and it's all stuck okay so also for baby boy I well okay so I was cleaning under my bed I know I know <laughs> I got lost I got stuck but I also got lost because there's so many bins of random things like old extra not old but like extra office supplies like binders that we don't use accordion folders and all sorts of things also three bins of yarn and so I really did get lost um and then I got stuck because I was on the floor for too long and then I got stuck I found this yarn that is the same yarn that I used for our daughter Lucy's little like we call it her huggy it's like the perfect it's a little bigger than like a lovey that has like a little stuffed animal on it um, but it's not a full size like car seat. Well, I guess it's kind of a full size car seat blanket, stroller blanket. Um, so we call it her Huggy. This though, its official name is the Rose Love Blanket. And this is how much of it I have done. I just cast it on two days ago, I think. And then it got really hot to work on as I added more and more rows. Um, but this color is really fun for a little baby and his woodland nursery or his nursery is woodland themed and um, I'm going for kind of greens and grays and so the yarn that I chose was the same yarn that I used for Lucy's Rose Love Blanket and that is the I think it's Yarn Bee called Snuggle Up I think is what its name is um, it's from Hobby Lobby I'll link it down below and the color I think it was just gray but I'm not sure I'll I'll link that if I find it um but I didn't realize that I had well here I'll show you the whole skein I didn't realize that I had two of these which is all you need to make the rose love blanket which is also a free pattern on my blog so you can either go to Etsy or Ravelry for the um like the PDF or just to my blog and it'll list out what to do and everything so I was so excited when I saw this did I already knit him a blanket yes <laughs> but it's kind it's a very heavy blanket it's a very dark blanket that I made him it's like um uh, lime brand woolies thick and quick in charcoal 
And so I'm kind of thinking, I would like something lighter for him. Not, I mean, it is still hot, but like lighter in color. That way, if I want to do a picture of him teeny tiny and um, have him on top of it, it won't be this dark, dark picture. It'll still like reflect some light and um, yeah, mostly I just wanted to make something else for him, even though I still have to finish his vest. <laughs> so let's see, what else can I say about my blanket? I think that's all I said oh I use size 11 needles which it'll say in the blog post um, and it is basically a car seat blanket it's um, I don't know it's Lucy's favorite blanket she has hers in the original pattern I made it in the pink and so she has her she loves it um, and she does use it in the car so she has her crib huggy which she sleeps with and it's this blue blanket that my mom knit her and she absolutely adores that's like her number one blanket um but i try to keep that in the crib because i noticed she was getting not whiny but like very clingy with it and very tired when she wouldn't normally be ready for a nap and so i decided it was time to limit when she has her huggy and so that's just in her crib. She gets it at nap time and at bedtime and unless she's like sick or really hurt herself and that's the only thing that's gonna calm her down. Otherwise, her pink huggy is only a car blanket and she absolutely loves that. I, for a while, was worried. I was like, oh no, she's so into her huggy, her crib huggy that she's not gonna like the blanket that I knit for her. And then, I took her to the doctor for, I think it was her last checkup actually, her 15 month checkup. She got her shots and I realized I didn't bring her huggy for in the car like when we're driving home she can snuggle it, fall asleep because she, she's a little drowsy and tired and so I gave her her car huggy which she hadn't used recently because it's been so hot and she just snuggled right up and fell asleep and then the next bunch of times she used it she loved it so I was excited. I was like okay. There's still room to love mommy's blanket too. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay, well, trying to think if I had anything I wanted to share. I feel like I have a lot of whips. Well, I do, I have three and then, okay, I have five. <laughs> but I only showed you three, right? I only showed you guys three. I have five, except I just frogged one. So I have four um, whips. I also have my uh, ginger mint stocking. That's a whip. I haven't, I didn't show you it today because I haven't done anything on it at all. I need to knit on that. And also my other whip is, let me think. Um, oh, I had another whip that I've been working on. I'm trying to remember what it is. What is something that I showed you but I haven't showed progress? I don't know what it is. It's lost. Somewhere back in there it's lost. But all that to say, I have a lot of whips and so my goal is that I'm not casting anything else on before baby. I have two months to finish, especially the baby vest, the Rose Love Blanket and his little lovey, his dinosaur lovey. Okay, so add that to the list. Um, the stocking's probably going to be on the back burner a little bit. I there We have family stockings picked out, but none of them are actually knit, and I just have the cuff of one of them. So there's not a rush on that. We're not going to have them at Christmas this year. But I do have other things that I want to finish. Those three come to mind because they're for the baby and this will be a season that he'll use that kind of thing. Um, and then also obviously the vanilla cabin socks, the vanilla socks I showed you with the Mandy's making and the leading men. And then also I have a shrug that, like a little cocoon shrug that is a whip. That's the one I was gonna show you but I don't have a lot done on it today. Um, not enough to even really talk about or show you it. So I, needless to say, have probably no more than 10, no more than 10 whips, but certainly enough that I need to just focus on those and get those off my needles. In that way, once baby's here, it's not like in the back of my mind, it's not thrown under 
under the bed or not under the bed thrown but like in a bin under the bed it's not in the yarn ottoman it's not in the yarn hutch and I won't forget where I'm at in my place and so it would be nice to get some of those cast off um I do think I have yarn on the way I'm not sure um I do for sure have one skein because I ordered something from Sorella she has her um Taylor Swift collection, the pre-order had started, and so I did order a skein of yarn because I am a Swifty. Um, what else? I think that is all, that's definitely all the yarny chat that I have. And I already really think I chatted your ears off about pregnancy update and just life where we haven't done much it's just too hot so I think that's all I have for you guys today and um I don't know I mean should I sit and knit with you guys for a little bit I don't even know what time I'm at usually I am very rambly but I'm not sure um 40 okay well, I'm trying to think what I can share with you guys if you want to sit and chat for like five minutes because I need a snack. <laughs> the girls are taking their nap and my five-year-old decided that she wanted to take a nap with her sisters. Usually at nap time, it's the two younger ones, so my preschooler and the toddler, baby toddler, um, up in the bedroom actually sleeping. And then Clara, my five-year-old, will get to come down and she'll do in our room like her quiet time. So we call the whole thing nap time quiet time because the younger two nap. And then Clara sometimes will fall asleep on our bed, but not very often at all. Um, she'll usually have books and something like Polly Pockets or Calico Critters or Barbies or Legos or something like that that she can play quietly on our bed. And today when I was getting the other two ready, she asked if she could be in there also. I was like, are you really gonna sleep? She's like, yeah. And so I checked a whole bunch of times and made sure she knew that once I close the door, she can't change her mind. She can't be like, mm, I think I'm gonna go play now. And so We'll see. We'll see if she actually sleeps or not. I do hear that they're up there like singing and talking to each other, which is their nightly routine when it's all three of them in there because the three of them share a room. And um, it's hard. It's hard having three kids under six share a room. And especially when you add in some of their personalities, one, the middle one has been deciding that she's going to be very, very testing of our patients. And a lot of times we'll come up and the curtains are back open or she's up there like dancing her feet on the wall, making the noise and keeping everybody awake. And Clara at bedtime, she's not, she's a morning owl. So by bedtime she's exhausted and she'll just fall asleep. But Lucy completely feeds off of Natalie, our middle child's energy. Yeah, they're singing. So before nap time, they were putting on these music videos. They have these little VTech um, kid cameras that can take pictures and videos and they have a couple games on them. Well, we just found them like in their closet. We got new batteries and we, I put all the old pictures and stuff on my computer so there was completely new room. And so they were setting up their cameras on the kitchen table after lunch and doing, they got all dressed up as if they were doing ballet and they were doing the cutest ballet videos. And then meanwhile, Lucy scooted a chair over to the light switch and started, she just learned how to um, turn the lights on and off. So she just was doing lights on, off, on, off. And I was like, this looks like a dance party because you have the two dancing and singing to their own beat and recording it on their cameras and then Lucy's over there providing the strobe lighting and it was really funny 
it got some of their energy out because it's been so hot we haven't gone outside at all it's been stormy and so I feel like that got a lot of their energy out but they also got really wound up from doing that so we'll see if they actually will nap or not if not it's I'm gonna count it as quiet time nobody's up there upset they're in their own beds and they're just singing they're still performing <laughs> So that's how that's going. Um, oh, I know what I wanted to say. I just wanted to tell the moms out there, let them know that I am thinking of you guys this week. I know a lot of schools started this week. They have back to school. And first of all, anyway, changing your schedule and your routine and ending summer vacation and all that is such a big change. Um, you end up with more tired, grumpy kids, hungry kids, emotional kids, and even just as moms, getting used to a new schedule and routine and getting kids out the door and stuff is a whole lot. And so I just wanted you moms to know that I'm thinking of you, I am praying for you, and also I am thinking of all your littles because I know a lot of people didn't go back to in-person for the end of last year um, a lot of people did but whether you whether your kids did or not it's a whole new adjustment after a lot of a different different thing than they're used to happening and so I just wanted you guys to know that I'm thinking of you have extra patience with yourselves and give yourselves lots of grace because it's probably been a long week for you and you are a good mom. <laughs> you are a darn good mom, and your kids are going to have a fantastic year. So we haven't gone back to school yet. We are actually homeschooling again this year. We did um, ever since, let me think. So after Christmas last year, we didn't go back doing virtual because um, they were both doing virtual preschool last fall. It didn't go well. They they just couldn't handle the screens and the sitting still and the listening and it was hard because even on the other end because her teachers had masks and stuff you couldn't really hear with the cutting out you couldn't there are no captions or subtitles and it's not like you can like read facial expressions or read their lips or anything so the girls really struggled with that last fall so after Christmas I pulled them out of their virtual preschool and we did homeschooling and so we are doing that again this year and I'm excited I'm very excited we have all of our stuff ready um, any books that we're doing my daughters were decorating their lesson plan books so that hopefully they're excited about it too I know they are um, we are actually well, I guess we're not 100%. We're like 98, 99% sure that our middle child, Natalie, is going to do in-person preschool two days a week. Um, just I think she needs it. She needs the socializing and to get the energy out. She also is typically our most, um, I'm trying to think of what the word is. Oh, I can't think of what the word is. She's just very, she has a lot of emotions. And she is usually at one end or the other with her emotions and I think being in a social environment at this age and kind of making friends and taking some direction from adults other than her parents every day not every day but um, like routinely I think would be really good for her she definitely uh, does not really have a social circle since we moved so we've we've lived here now for two years um basically a season before everything shut down and so uh clara has her cousin who's born three days before her who lives not too far away and she also did soccer in the fall so she's had some play dates with girls on her team but we really haven't plugged natalie in anywhere yet and so I'm hoping that between doing preschool and doing soccer this fall, also I'm really hoping that she'll kind of just 
I don't know, just have a great year. And so she's gonna be doing that two days a week and Clara is going to be doing school, um, school at home. I'm calling it four days a week, knowing that Fridays we usually do like a fun Friday, which will be like a field trip and usually involve their cousin because she's also homeschooling. Um, my sister's homeschooling her. And so I'm gonna call it four days a week and um, those two days a week that Natalie is in preschool will be kind of nice because I can save the the things that need more attention with Clara or not even more attention like she can't do it but just this is going to take more focus so the math and the learning to read which she's already I mean she's she's already doing really great with that but just the things that I feel like wouldn't be as easy to teach her if I'm also trying to give Natalie something to work on too, then I'm going to have her work on those, those two days a week. And, um, yeah, let me know if your kids are in school this week or if they start closer to September. Back in my day, I feel like we started like the week before Labor Day, maybe, was like the earliest we ever started. Yeah, because we'd go on a Wednesday and it would be three days of school and then you get the four day weekend and then you'd go into September which would be all pretty much school every day I think or maybe September might have a day off in there too I don't know but they start so early so let me know did your kids start did your grandkids start what grades are they going into I love seeing on Facebook all the pictures of the first day of school being put out um, and let me know if you're also a homeschool mom because this is all brand new to me. I actually was homeschooled for second, third, and fourth grades. And at some point, all of my siblings were homeschooled. Never all four of us at the same time. Um, three of us, maybe. I'm trying to remember if three of us. But definitely I remember me and my brother who's two years older than me. I remember um, mostly it was us two together. I don't think they ever took on three at once. Definitely not four. Four of us were not. Four of us might have been home. I'm trying to think if my older two siblings were homeschooled. Maybe I wasn't in school yet and maybe my oldest or maybe my next closest sibling might have been like in preschool or kindergarten. I don't know. But I was homeschooled, so I definitely have an appreciation for just that lifestyle, being home, and having just those priorities and those values, and being able to spend some of that extra time with your kids and teaching them. And um, so I'm excited to start this homeschool journey. I don't know. I don't know. I plan to do it for a while. I mean, I've been researching and I know all of what has to uh, really happen, all the uh, requirements and all that, going as far as high school. And honestly, I'm not sure if that's how far we'll go, but it's definitely not something I'm saying no to. And um, yeah, we'll see. But for now, I'm going to be homeschooling kindergarten and preschool. And That'll be interesting because we'll also have a newborn. So, homeschool moms, also give yourself a lot of grace, patience, and um, know that you're doing a great job too. I, I really have gotten some great advice from listening to some podcasts. I really like um, Coffee with Carrie is a good podcast. And then I've also really seen some great things on here on YouTube actually of just searching for like, homeschool routines and planners and how to schedule your day and that kind of thing. Um, which like I said, we'll have a newborn, so I don't know how strict we're going to be as far as schedule. I think we're just going to kind of take it as it comes and especially we're just going to like, yeah, <laughs> I'm putting it in the planner to kind of go through um, September and see how that routine is going and then I'll add it into October, November, December and add whatever changes we need to. Um, 
our first day that I wrote down is August 31st. So I do have a little bit of time. Uh, and I'm trying to write in there like what pages, what books and what pages she's going to do. And then I'm also trying to get together some free resources or like went to the dollar store for the preschool books for Natalie to do on the two days a week that she'll be home and be around while Claire's doing her homeschool school. And so I'm like, I want Natalie to still have something to do that's still a little bit of learning time. I don't want to overwhelm her because she will be in preschool the two other days of the week. So even if it's just like a coloring page or um, last year, I got these really great pages that was just like doodles, but it was doodling the letters of the alphabet and like turning that letter into the shape of an animal and that kind of thing. So I'm very excited about that. And yeah, I'm just excited for fall and ready. All right, this is my knitting progress. I think I did a couple rows, maybe three rows. And that is all I have for you guys today. I think that's all the chat. That was more than five minutes of a chat. I should have known, it happens. But um, like I said, I hope you guys have a really great week. Stay safe and stay cool if you're in the Midwest or I guess I don't know what the temperatures are like in other parts of the country and of the world, but just, Get, get yourself in front of some AC and get some um, really cold apple cider because that's been helping me. <laughs> so thanks guys for um, hanging out and knitting with me. I'm so excited to share these projects with you. And I just love watching knitting podcasts because I feel like it's enabling me with all these patterns that I'm seeing and the yarns and just, it's really cool to just find this knitting community gets bigger and bigger and bigger as I find more knitting podcasters and make friends with them. And um, two knitting podcasts that I want to recommend today that um, are becoming good friends of mine are the Little Monkeys and Me podcast and Penrose Knits. So if you don't know their podcasts, I'll link them down below. Um, but they are wonderful knitters, wonderful people, and... Um, I, like I said, I just love that the knitting community has expanded my love for knitting, which I didn't think was possible because now I just want to knit all the things that I see them knitting and get all the yarn that I see them getting. So, um, all right, I'll see you guys next episode. Um, have a great week and I will talk to you guys soon.